and that summer it was that summer was so stressful bro like i could feel the tension right like every time like i see my parents right yeah i feel i feel i feel and then and then i remember like one time my dad like walked into my room and he was like hey so like what what are you gonna do like if you don't get into your major right and i was like well i might just do like an extra year and then try again right yeah and then he was like well i i forgot what what the premise was but he was i just remember he was like then we'll not like financially support you if like you don't get in or some something like that oh right? like because he he really wanted me to like if i couldn't get into like cs here he wanted me to transfer to another school to do cs there right? oh and so I, I didn't i didn't like that and maybe that's why like he said that but it was like i just remember damn i really want to go to ut cs <laughs> right and it was so stressful Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Nuance Nonsense. This is your co-host, Alex. I'm your other co-host, Bren. And we brought on the founder of these amazing shirts from Absence Apparel. Would you like to introduce yourself? Hello, my name is Ben. <laughs> and yeah, I designed these t-shirts. So, awesome. What made you want to design them? Like, what, um, what's the inspiration here? I think most of my inspiration <laughs> was from, like, subtle Asian traits. <laughs> Loki, because, like, it's, like, also because, like, Asian representation, too. Um, I feel like... I don't know. I just it's just this community that just like blew up since like Crazy Rich Asians came out, yeah. and it's like something I was like super passionate about. Like even before the movie came out, mm. like you look at Hollywood, right? There's like oh, no right. Asians. Yeah. Yeah. There's like literally very little yeah. Asians. Even when right? they cast yeah. the case Crazy Rich Asians, they literally casted every single famous <laughs> Asian. That's what I'm person. saying. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy though. Um, mm-hmm. I I think that was like mostly my inspiration for this. Um, but yeah, like I just. Drew it out one day. I don't know. It just came to me one day. I just like, you know, it would be awesome to see on like, you know, sort of Asian traits. I know they did like t-shirts already, but I just wanted to like. Make I it think it's it, like uh, theirs is. It feels a little bit more corporate. Yours feels a little more like, like what is it? Grassroots. Uh, maybe grassroots more uh-huh. like, like indie. I guess. Yeah, yeah, oh, indie. indie, indie yeah, yeah, I feel, I feel like like you're not because yeah, yeah. you're not going into this <laughs> full at least full time for now. Yeah. Right? You know the point of this is like I'm, I wasn't expecting this thing to like you know like blow up like hella. Mm-hmm. Like, it was like, oh, if it blows up, then, like, good for me. But it's just, like, also for the experience, like, startup experience, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got, like, I started this, like, at the end of last semester. So spring. Yeah, I remember you told me about, like, that you showed me, like, very prototype designs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I didn't actually get to, like, making the website and everything until, like, the summer. Plus, I had an extra time because I didn't get an internship <laughs> and stuff like that. And so, yeah. Wait, so how long did you spend developing, like, the shirt designs, the website, all of that? Oh, I think, well, the designs <coughs> actually didn't take too long. Um, it, just, it was just a matter of, like, getting the ideas. I had, like, an idea for, like, five shirts or, like, five Oh, designs. okay. And okay. I was like, okay, I'll do that. But then, oh, dude, the, like, the website was so frustrating. I didn't even, like, code it. I didn't yeah. even code it. Which oh, is, really? It was crazy, yeah. Because, like, I felt, because I talked to one of my friends, he was like, if you if you just like learn coding like you don't know shit right and so like you, it's like beside the point of the business or whatever yeah, like, yeah. Uh, the vision right so if you can just get like I, I use the website builder it's called WordPress mm-hmm. I don't know if you guys know that I think like I, WordPress yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, like WordPress core space like oh yeah yeah, 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 yeah it's yeah. like, like website the, it helps yeah. you build right it's, and like, so, it's like, like drag and drop so it's like you can make a clean website without having like that's right ex- that's extreme right. coding experience yeah. yeah. And so that, that that was like part of the vision. So I didn't want to stray from too much. Fair, from fair. Did you have to pay um, for your own domain? Or that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. It was very cheap. My one of my friends recommended, um, like Namecheap, mm-hmm. very cheap uh, domain. And then so I bought that. And I was like freaking out, like, <laughs> dude. I was like, I bought it, and I was like, oh, I need to get SSL. And <laughs> SSL was like encrypting the um, the page. So like, oh, like okay. I think I think that's how it works. Right? They encrypt the page. So if like. If, if you're if your credit card the information on your credit card oh, is like encrypted right so yeah it's like gibberish or whatever something like that i think that's how it works <laughs> hey don't quote me on that though <laughs> but it was like pretty stressful it took me like i'd say the whole summer like i would work here and there and then like spend some time here and there it wasn't like all oh, like eight hours there <laughs> coding um or not, not coding but like drag and drop in you know? <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah it took me the whole summer and I think that, 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 that was the longest part of the process. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Mm. I think it, the SSL thing is like somewhat how we were trying to mess with the RLS for the podcast. Was it called RLS? I think. 
it wasn't called ROS. Oh, shoot. What was it? Do you was, know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't remember what it was called, but it was like this, like, podcast fee <coughs> thing where, like... It's like some form of distributor. Yeah, it's a mm-hmm. distributor. So, basically, like, we just... When we started this podcast, we just thought, like, oh, you can just upload it on, like, Spotify and YouTube. <laughs> right, right. It's, like, game over. <laughs> I just up- upload some MP, MP4 files. Right, but, right. But, like, it's uh, yeah. more complicated. It's more complicated right, than that, because, right. like, I think... Like you, oh, it's RSS. RSS. An, R- an RSS, RSS feed. So, like, okay, okay. you need to upload it that... You need to have, like, an RSS feed of some sort. And, like, usually, like, you have to pay or you can get, like, a distributor. So, we, we use, like, Anchor by oh, FM. And, like, okay. that distributes it to Spotify, SoundCloud, uh-huh. like, other, I guess, podcast hosting websites. Right, right. But, yeah, basically, you have to do that to, like... I guess, like, standardize. So, like, mm-hmm. they know, like, your material is, like complete oh, trash oh, yeah. yeah 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 it was just like we just didn't know what we were doing like we kind of just like jumped head first <laughs> right right and then right. we're like oh like there's protocols we need to follow but, yeah that's what so, i'm saying like, for like website stuff i thought it was like oh just like <coughs> code some something it's more it's a lot more complicated than that yeah and yeah. so like now like i've gained like an appreciation <laughs> for like websites that look good mm-hmm. um especially if they're built from scratch that's yeah. true that's yeah. true yeah. yeah and there's like still things that were like on the website builder that they didn't have, which is like... Oh, really? Yeah, it's like, I don't know, it's super like, for pictures, like, I couldn't manipulate it too much. Like, oh, they really? Had, like, it was, like, preset, of my, like, oh. oh you, like, do, like, whatever pixel, whatever. But, like, I couldn't, like, move the picture, <coughs> like, where I wanted it on the Oh, the wait, so how did you get around that? Uh, I just, I just put the picture in, like... <laughs> A Photoshop thing, and then just made like a <laughs> white space behind it to like manipulate the how big the picture was. It was it was it was it was a tedious process. It was yeah. a tedious yeah. process. Um, so yeah, yeah, and then a lot a lot of oh, and then another part was like getting the pictures was also like oh really kind of, kind of like it took quite 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 some time because like I started taking pictures towards the end of spring. And then <coughs> that's when school, I mean, ended, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then summer hit, and then no one's like, everyone dispersed. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. And so I was like, oh man, where do I get these? What do, <laughs> who, do, who do I ask, right? And so, thank goodness, like every everyone that I asked, like we're, we're here. And oh, like, okay, okay. And, okay. Yeah, and and so uh, the pictures took some time, but everything was put together at the end. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. How is it? Wait, how is the mobile site development, or is it like just the same? Oh, it was exactly the same. So like. The, the website builder is really awesome. It has, like, the desktop site, mm-hmm. and then it had the tablet site, and oh, then it had the mobile. And so like, you can, like, do whatever you like, want. Like, do you have to, like, adjust it for each site specifically? Right. Yeah. So, no, you create the de- – well, what I did, right, yeah, was yeah. I created a desktop, and then I, like, click the tablet version, and it does, like, whatever it does to tablet, and then some things will look off, and I just, like, fix those things. So, the, the change is specifically for the tablet, right? It doesn't right. affect the desktop. Right, right, right. Okay, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I remember, it's really nice. It's I remember really I nice. took a, a class, like, software engineering uh-huh, last uh-huh. semester, and, like, we had to think about that. Like, how oh. to think the mobile change, and, like, it was so annoying, because, like, <laughs> there was, like, this, like, feedback thing, like, because, like, you work in the group, right, and, like, right, you right, have right, to right. be, like, a, like, you're, like, they, you have another group that serves as the client, and you're the uh-huh. developer. So, like... And then, like, you switch the roles up, too. So then, like, you're the client, you're the, someone else's developer. So then, for our client, they had to, you have to give, like, five, like, points of, like, criticism that they improve uh, on. Or else, like, that's part of your grade. So they, they kept on, like, harping on, like, our mobile side. They're just like, <laughs> oh, like, you know, like, you know, this thing, like, is, like, badly formatted. Or, like, you know, I wish, like, you oh, would use this annoying. feature. And we're just like, bro, like shut the fuck up like, <laughs> you can't think of any actual criticism right, right, like right. who the hell's gonna like we're just like fuck the mobile users right. <laughs> but yeah yeah and eventually we had to do it but it was such a pain because mm-hmm. like because like i guess like wordpress and like squarespace like they handled that like yeah. in, in like the back end but then like like we basically had to like we had basically had to figure out how javascript did it and like it was uh, such a pain I, I don't even think i think our mobile site is still like trash but like mm-hmm. we just turned in and then and the class is over so <laughs> the domain's gone now oh nice yeah. was it was it free did y'all have to pay for the domain yeah i think it was like a dollar or something oh dang that's pretty uh, cheap. we might have used namecheap as well oh, okay yeah, yeah, yeah namecheap's really nice mm-hmm. um wait how does that work with like securing domains and like all of this I mean, to be honest, I let someone I let someone else in the group. <laughs> well, like, I think, like, you, like, just, like, type in this <coughs> random name, right? Uh-huh. So, oh, coming up with a name was also, like, a pain in the ass. Like, uh-huh. oh. Well, like, yeah, how did you come up with absence? Okay, so I was, like, at first, the first one was so cringy. It was, like, simpleteshirt.com or, or something like that. <laughs> and I was, like, because I, I, I wanted to also, like, like, I know this is, like, very, like, uh, these jokes on these t-shirts are, like, Towards, geared towards Asian. Yeah. Right? So I also wanted to like 
like spread later on like if this thing does like blow up or whatever like spread into other communities so i didn't want to be like oh asian t-shirts or something like that easy you know? yeah <laughs> you said <laughs> we're in the 2000s <laughs> and then gotta like, put those x's man. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah and so then i was like oh what do i name it and then i was like minimalist t-shirt and i was like oh i don't even know bro like, <laughs> and then i think i think one time i fell asleep it's crazy and then i thought of a name but then I, when I woke up, I was like, oh, that's a great name. But then I forgot about it. <laughs> and then so I was like, okay, whatever. Forget it, right? And then I was like, I, don't, I actually don't know how I came up with absence. It's just like a word that was like minimal. I guess like a, like a synonym of like a minimal, <laughs> I guess. I don't know, like absence of like not too much is going on around okay. the t-shirt, I guess. I thought right? you were going to tell me that like you forgot the name that you came up while you were dreaming. And you're like, oh, absence. Because like, I forgot <laughs> it. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, that's how I came up with the name. Um, it took me quite some time because like I needed the name before I made like. Oh domain, yeah, because right? you need to claim the domain. Yeah, and so like I was like looking up all these and they were all taken. I was like, oh my god, like <laughs> yeah. Um, so um, I don't know. I just stumbled upon the word absence and I was like, oh maybe that I should just you know use that. Um, fair, yeah, fair. Right. Yeah. But before, I guess yeah, you kind of talked about like Asian representation and stuff. But before we go into that, let's backtrack yeah, to that. Like, we usually ask a guest like you know how was your college <laughs> experience? Like what are some highs and lows? Oh you have? okay okay. I think oh let's go back to like the beginning. Okay. The beginning. Oh, the beginning. <laughs> okay beginning. I graduated high school the right. The backstory. Okay 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 like. I think it's junior, it's junior year when you do, like, application. No, senior year, right? Senior, senior year. year, you, you like, take, take SAT. SAT, 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 right? Like that, yeah. okay. Seniors when you apply. Okay, so <laughs> senior year, right? I was like, okay, I'm only going to apply to one school because I know I'm going to get it. Because <laughs> I was like, it was at that at that year, it was like 8%, top 8%. You're right. Women, right? Yeah, you're right, you're right. You're and right. then I was like, oh, that's easy money, right? <laughs> um, well, for my school, it was like, because my school was, was weird. Like, Was it a smaller school? It had, like, well, my class had, like, 450. Oh, okay, okay yeah, it's about my high school size. Um, yeah. And so, like, it was kind of, I don't know if y'all, about y'all, but, like, if y'all took AP, AP classes, do they, like, weigh them differently? Yeah, 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 yeah. Weigh they're way higher. How much higher? So, like, for my school, it was, like, AP classes 5.0, honors classes 4.5, uh, and regular classes 4.0. Uh, yeah. And yeah. I've heard some other different scales before, yeah, too, like, like 6, 5, 4. Yeah, first school is, is a, normally a 5-point scale for regular classes, uh-huh. but, like, pre-AP, like, honors, uh... AP, that's a 6.0 scale. Mm-hmm. So. Well, okay, so for mine, I don't know. I don't even know how it worked. But anyways, I just knew that AP classes, they add like a 10% like weight. With the oh, you get to it. That is 10%, 10% yeah. To like uh, whatever your, your overall, I don't, I don't know, normal GP. I don't know, whatever. So they just I, weigh more. Yeah, they yeah. weigh more. So I took all AP classes. <laughs> right? And I did, I, while I did do like pretty good on them, like, um, I didn't pass a lot of AP <laughs> classes, right? And so I was like, okay, whatever. And so I was able to, thank goodness I was able to get into under like, I was like 6%, right? Uh, 6%. 450, so 10% is 45. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and then and then 5% would be about like, what is it? 45, 20, 20, 22? 22. Yeah, 22. I was around there, I was around there, right? And then, and then I was like, okay, I'm gonna get in for sure. At that time, I, I didn't know that like, like you can get accepted to the university, but you can't. You, you, even though you haven't gotten accepted into like oh school, your major, right? yeah, yeah your major. And so I applied to computer science. I was like, okay, I'm gonna get in for sure, right? Eight <laughs> percent. I get into the university, did not get into the school, and I was like, oh, okay. And at that time, like, I don't know about you guys, like Asian parents are like, oh, what are you gonna choose now, right? Yeah, they're then, they're like, hmm, these don't look that yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, and then so like I remember <coughs> AT giving me like a list of um majors I could yeah, choose yeah, from yeah. now right and then one of them was like AET which is arts and entertainment technology yeah which is like I think at that time it was like an experimentary um major. I think I've heard of I this. think it was one of the newer um, majors at the time. Yeah, yeah a newer major yeah. it's liberal arts right oh I forgot I forgot what it was but yeah. essentially what it was it was like essentially computer science lesser but like it combines like the art more art stuff to it right yeah yeah i've heard of this I've like heard of it's this. like half and half basically you mash them together and then i was gonna choose that and then like my mom you could tell you could tell i could tell my mom's face was like yeah probably not that <laughs> so i just went undeclared right and then i remember oh the first year was so stressful because like yeah i had the big year and then i remember one time like um I like I think I didn't do as well in like one of my chem chem uh, or like chem oh the beginning test. Chem, like gen yeah, chem yeah, yeah and I was like 
even though I was doing really <coughs> well, like, like I would ever or, like pass a class or whatever. I think I didn't think it was that well to like get into CS, right? So I still wanted to go into CS, um, but thank goodness I got an A in that class. So you know, and then oh, I remember every like break I went home, like I just I just like my parents were always like, oh, did you get in yet? Did you get in yet? To, like oh, CS. that's a lot of pressure. Yeah, and I'm like, oh my goodness, right? <laughs> and then I remember, okay, so I apply in the spring, right? And then. Um, I was like so scared. I was like, "Am I even gonna get in, right?" And so I remember we had we had to write an essay about why we wanted to get in, like, and what impact like that major would have on our lives if we got in or something like that. I just turned it in, and then and that summer it was that summer was so stressful. But like I could feel the tension, right? Like every time like I see my parents, right? Yeah, I feel, I feel, I feel. And then and then I remember like one time my dad like walked into my room and he was like. Hey, so like, what what are you gonna do like if you don't get into your major, right? And I was like, well, I might just do like an extra year and then you try again, right? Yeah. And then he was like, well, I I forgot what what the premise was, but he was I just remember he was like, then we'll not like financially support you if like you don't get in or some something like that. Oh. Right? Like because he he really wanted me to like if I couldn't get into like CS here, he wanted me to transfer to another school. To do CS there, right? oh. and so I, I didn't I didn't like that, and maybe that's why like he said that. But it was like I just remember, damn, I really want to go to UT CS, <laughs> right? And it was so stressful. And then I remember the day I got like the notifications, right? It was like San, uh, secure academic. Yes, yeah, San. Yeah. Oh, bro, I I like I opened it. My heart was racing, and it was like congratulations, got it. I was like hell yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And then um, I showed my parents, and then. They're still supporting me now. Um, they better. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, and then, and then coming into uh, that, that's just the academic side of like uh, my experience, like coming into UT. So I'm assuming that <laughs> bit where it was just like the unsureness, the like unsteadiness was like a low. Yeah, that was definitely a low. Like, oh my goodness, <laughs> like I could not like slip on my grades. Right, <laughs> it was like pre med life. I don't know how y'all. Oh, do that, dude. Man. Oh. Oh, one year, but time times four. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, bro. Anyways, but so props to y'all guys. Do you think props academically it's been better since you got in, or it's been like up uh, and down as well? So academic, it's definitely had like bigger, like smaller hills than like the initial part. Yeah, it goes up and down as well, and because um, after I got in, right, I was like super chillax, <laughs> and I was like, yes, I got in, but like for some reason, like I could not like. Like function in these classes like intro i remember intro the programming um and then data structures and then discrete math like those three classes you needed to get like a 2.75 gpa right in order to to, to continue and see oh. yeah. there's entry there's entry level and then, and then there's, there's like, like your, like, your, oh, like, your BS, yeah. like you can do like a bs like bachelor of science or bachelor of science oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. and so that was like the next hurdle in the cs realm right and then i was like Oh, because I, I kind of struggled. I don't know why I struggled so much looking back. I guess, like, it's been a hot minute since I like, did <laughs> coding or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, I did really bad on, like, I passed those classes, but, like, I didn't do so hot in, like, the, the actual coding classes. And so I didn't make the cutoff again, right? Oh, so It was crazy. There? So, like, I remember the next summer, they sent me a secure <laughs> and a sad <laughs> again, right? And they're like, unfortunately, like, you did not meet the, re the GPA requirement. I was, like, super close, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he was like, unfortunately, you did not meet it. And then, like, you will be dropped or something like that. It was, like, intimidating, bro. Yeah. And then, oh, and then I remember my heart was pounding. And then um, I, didn't, I ended up not telling my parents because I knew they would freak out. And then so, but I, 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 I called my friend and he was like, you just send him an email, right? You might, you might be able to appeal it, right? So I sent him an email, and I was able to appeal it, right? I was like, Ooh. Ooh. I'm like walking on a tightrope, like all the time, right? So I was able to appeal, but the one catch was I had to make a B minus or above in the next CS class. Oh, to like Which offset? Is, yeah, 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 and so, and so I did that, and then here I am today, academically. Ooh. Definitely, like, there are classes out there in CS that are out to get you. OS, for instance, oh, that was hard. <laughs> But I'm glad I passed that. Um, so that's me, like, academically, since I started UT. Um, well, as in, like, socially and stuff like that. Um, I did have a little trouble, um, like, finding, finding, like, the group. Like, acclimating? Right, right, right. And so I did have a group in, like, for, 
for uh, my freshman year because we had a lot of classes together. So we oh. Got a lot. And then towards the end of that that year, <coughs> like, I got into CS, so, like, we're not going to see t- each other too much anymore, right? And so, like, I mean, we still hang a little bit yeah, around like, that time, Still right? friends. Mm-hmm. But it's, like, less, right? And then, like, dang, I really need to join. I remember I told one of my friends, I was like, I, I, I need a, I need a, um... I need to go join some orgs, right? A social org. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Backtrack, backtrack. Let's run it back. Let's run it back. <laughs> so, back. <laughs> so freshman year, right? I met, I met, I met a, a group of people. Um, and this one girl, she told me, hey, you should join VSA, right? VSA, and because she was in it. And she said, oh, you should join FSA too, right? Because she was in it, right? Oh. And that was, that was my fall, right? Freshman year fall. So I'm, I'm still like doing this like academic like struggle. Oh, that. so he's like, 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 oh, do I even do that? So I was like, okay, I joined spring semester right okay okay and i was like she's like okay that's fine but i still hung out around her group a little bit because she had like a vsa family okay, like, so you were kind of you're like a pseudo vsa right family. right right but i didn't like go to their socials or anything because like i, I wasn't you're, up to date you were just like bunkered down yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, okay. like, oh you want to go study at pcl or like <laughs> and then so and then come come comes around like spring semester right um i joined but like at that time like she had already found like a um like an so oh she found an SO, so like she kind of disappeared from the face of earth and then so so like, you were just like going solo yeah yeah and so i go there and she's not there right and i'm like oh my goodness like what do i do so i pay the dues for uh i think i pay the dues for vsa i don't know if i ever went to like an fsa like general meeting mm. but i went to the vsa general meeting and i paid um and and by that time it makes sense like the first semester like people already made their clicks already right? yeah 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 and then the second semester it's like <coughs> it's it's a little harder to like yeah it's a continuation of yeah. what happened in the first semester right right and so um I, I don't think like that that GM like not a lot of people like approach me or whatever even though I was like putting the fam and everything yeah and so it's like I kind of like stopped going because of that and then come back to like the next next year right. It's like, man, I really need to join org, <laughs> right? And then my friend was like, oh, you should join Tasa, right? And he's not, he's not even in Tasa. He just, he just heard, <laughs> heard about them, right? Yeah. Like, cause, cause at that time they were like still fundraising using, um, like selling boba. Oh, that is. Yeah. <laughs> that's a throwback for you. That's, that's when I was a J.O. <laughs> yeah, this is sophomore year. This yeah, is this sophomore. is my yeah. sophomore year. And then he was like, yeah, you should go join. And then, so I walk up to their like little bobo stand thing. I was like, hey, I'm interested in joining. I'm not going to buy the bobo, but I'm interested in joining, right? <laughs> and so he like, hey, here's our next general meeting. And I went, and then someone talked to me there. And then I just got like more involved and like kept going. And history yeah. just. That's played it. itself yeah. in there. That's right. That's right. And yeah, and that's that's yeah, that's the struggle between I guess when I first started UT until now. Yeah, and then definitely like CS is hard. <laughs> definitely a lot of like academic struggle in that too. But I'm glad I made like friends in CS to like also pull me through too. Yeah. Friends are a must in CS. Dude, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> there are very few people. Like, you know how, like, there are a lot of assignments. Or I might be incriminating myself uh-huh. right now. But there are, <laughs> a lot of, there are a lot of assignments that are, like, it's like, you must work individually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you, know, like, you cannot consult anybody. Yeah, nobody yeah, yeah. follows that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, right, UTCS, I, please only listen to this podcast after I graduate. <laughs> <laughs> no, because, like, it's also, like, in the workforce, like, no one, like, works alone. Yeah, they don't work know? alone. Like, you work in teams. Yeah. yeah like, I'm, like, we're not, I'm not saying that we're all looking at each other's code and, like, copy and pasting. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, You know, yeah. we're, like... This guy's definitely... smiling. This guy's smiling. Nah, it's just a little, it's just a little meme from, like, you know, because OS was just very much, like, if oh. you, if you, like, if she thinks your code is similar, then you're sent to, like, student judicial services, and, like... You just fucked? Yeah, you're, you're like, yeah. your best Wait, case is, is you OS? get... OS is operating, operating systems. systems. It is the hardest class. Well, it's the One hardest. It's hardest. Class. It's the hardest class you're required to take. That's is it like true. a weed-out class? True. I don't want to say it's a weed-out class because by the time you take it, you're already too far in. Yeah. Oh. That's right. But like, that's right. yeah, I guess data structures is kind of the weed-out class. Yeah. Because the professor for that one's like his test, like I'll to get you. Like, oh. Okay. If you don't know your things, like super solid, yeah, yeah. like you can be like, like oh, every, wait, it could be yeah. this. You know? Every question is yeah. a trick question, basically. Yeah. Every every question, <laughs> I hated it, bro. Yeah. And then like. So basically, like, she sent, like, a lot of people I knew to, like, SGS, and even though they're, like, you know, even though, like, they didn't re- they didn't do it, at least that's what they claimed, mm-hmm. right? So then it's just, like, not every time, like, we have to help each other, 
like even when my friends have to help each other we're like okay like this is what i did you know the baby's like hey baby, make sure you don't copy it <laughs> like, you better change it or else we're gonna get both in trouble right yeah, so yeah, like, yeah. that's a, that's a little meme yeah, yeah so yeah, far yeah. uh so far like that hasn't happened yet but right, we'll right. see how it goes but yeah and there's definitely like a lot of struggle in that yeah yeah how do you think your life changed once you like found your community Oh, I think it changed a lot. Like, I was able, like, <coughs> I remember freshman year, like, I would, like, do things, everything alone. Oh. It was kind of, it was kind of, like, even though I didn't have, like, a set of friends, like, um. It's more courageous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I felt, like, it felt, it felt pretty, pretty nice, not gonna lie. Yeah. Being able to, like, going out to, like, these socials and stuff like that, meeting new people. Uh, um. Yeah, that, that I love, I love, I love the, I love Tasa, yeah, yeah. Do you have any advice for people that are still, like, looking for their community? Because, like, you found it outside of freshman year, yeah. even though people have, like, this general notion that you should find a community yeah. in freshman year. And just, like, grind yeah. in school or do career stuff the next Because there are a lot of people oh. I know that, like, after, like, you found, they found their, like, you know, their, like, circle in freshman year, they kind of just, like, every year after that, it's just been, like, a drop-off. Oh, yeah. I see, I see. It's like, they're only hanging out with their own people, which is not, like, a bad thing. It's just, like, you found your community. Right, right, right. Um, I think, for me, like, <laughs> any any advice to, like, find the right community would be, like, um, you just have to kind of, like, go to things, essentially, right? Like, so be present. Yeah, be present. Like, I think, I think, oh, there's, a, there's this one quote. It's, like, something, something. And just make sure that you show up all the time. And you're bound for, like, good things to happen. Oh, so, like, increasing opportunity. Yeah, yeah. And so, being able to, like, show up, like... Because I remember, like... Oh, was it... When I first joined Tasa, like... I think I went to a lot of the, like, socials and stuff like that. Because, um, like, you, after so many socials, you see, like, the same face again, right? Yeah, so, yeah, like, yeah. The same faces. And then, like, you get more comfortable and stuff like that. Um, and then also, don't be afraid to, like, 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 open up sometimes to people, you know? That's how you get close. Um, like once you like, even though it feels like they're waiting for you to open <laughs> yeah. up or whatever, and then and then they open up, like may sometimes you have to like you know leap of faith. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Sometimes like, I think the biggest like fear is just like you're afraid of like you opened up too soon, or like you opened up too much, uh-huh. and like it's like above their comfort level. That's true. Like That's how do true. you like? Do you feel like you know like, you've like, like you're like kind of like natural opening up, or do you feel like you kind of had like to like I guess. I like guess. Finagle, finagle a little bit over time <laughs> to see, like, um, you know, like, what's, what's your advice over that? For, like, opening up? Yeah. I feel like, oh, I don't know. That's hard, bro. Hold up. I feel like it, it's okay to open up, mm-hmm. like, um, like, after you, you've hung out with them for a little bit. Mm-hmm. Or, like, or if you feel like you just, like, clicked or something, like, yeah. it's okay to open up. Yeah. And if, like, the other person doesn't, like, take it that goodly, and then it should be fine, like... You try, you put your part in already. Right? <laughs> yeah, you know yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean? Like, um, and then, like, the rest is up to them. Um, but, yeah, like, I think that's, that would be my advice. Your advice, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, mean, I was just wondering, because, like, you know, you always hear, like, stories of people, like, yeah, I just met him for the first time. Now he's telling me, like, his life story and, like, uh, like the many struggles he goes, like, they're, like, they're taken aback, right? Yeah. And there's other cases uh, where, like, you've been friends with this person for, like, a while and like two years but you like you feel like you still don't really know like <laughs> yeah. who's the real them right like that, like, like that, the, yeah. the only you can tell the real person like for like glimpses like when they let their guard down right, right, yeah. right but it's just right, like you right. feel like you know i feel like the general i guess consensus like um, you know we feel like if you're friends with someone like you sh- you shouldn't have to be in like both extremes right i feel like if both people are comfortable then it should be fine like if, if one person's not comfortable and you're comfortable then like it's fine like like you, you just you just kind of like weed people out, kind of like that. Gotcha, gotcha. You know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah. Like friendship is a two way street. Yeah. yeah. Like a lot of the times, whenever it's like unbalanced like this, you can already tell like maybe something's y'all going real, on. Maybe y'all aren't real friends. Like <laughs> <laughs> oh well, maybe not that extreme, but like like something's going on, you know? Yeah. I feel like you can kind of like smoke it out. Like for example, if like it feels like you're opening up a lot and they're like not really giving you anything back, maybe like. They didn't. That, that's how you kind of know. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I kind of go back what I just said earlier, maybe a little too harsh. It's like, <laughs> I think, yeah, friendship is a little different for everyone. Right, yeah. Right, right. Like, some people, like, they will never, 
like they never want to open up 100 percent. like they're very private people mm-hmm. but that doesn't mean like they can't have friends yeah yeah like some people just aren't people people mm-hmm. and so it's just like it's okay like yeah. i think a really big thing for that is like some of my friends they like told me they're like yeah, I'm not a people person. Like, and mm-hmm. like I realize that now. It's like I'm not trying to meet new people. I'm just trying to hang on to the people I have. No new friends. <laughs> yeah, but I guess yeah, closeness is a subjective parameter. You know, that's so true. That's true. Like, so that ties a lot into friendship as well. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. but you have to be close to someone to be able to like always hang out. Well, not really hang out, but like. Like, keep in touch with them? Yeah, or Like, yeah, kind of know right. what's going on. Yeah, because, like, life. if you think about it, like, two people, person A, person B, like, they just talk about superficial things, like, hey, how do you, <laughs> how do you yeah, like the weather or something like that? Or, you know, it's not gonna, it's not gonna, I don't think it would, like, stick too well. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Uh, do you think you can be close to someone, like, long distance then? Because, like, I think the, the oh, long distance is, is kind of hard. Really it's hard. It's that's very hard to, hard. like, like, no matter what connection you had before, it's hard yeah. to keep it, like, no, talk about what's going on in your life like right, consistently right. over a long period of time oh, right? that that is hard um for me like some of my friends that are like long distances like we're not like super close um like we, we we're like comfortable with telling each other like what, what's going on in our lives um like so when i meet up with them it's like i just tell them like a quick update of what, what all happened and that's that's pretty much all i do i don't know if you guys like do anything I try to, like, meet up with my friends from, like, back home, but it's, like, really hard. Yeah, super like, hard. Like, it feels like... Sometimes you have, like, that connection, and, like, you just pick up where you left off. Mm-hmm. And yeah. t- sometimes it's just gone. Mm-hmm. Like, the proximity not being there, like, is yeah. a huge factor a lot of That's the time. That's true, yeah. Mm-hmm. But, like, that doesn't make, like, the friendship any less yeah. than before, right? Because I remember a lot of people would be like, oh, I feel like my real friends are the ones where, like, I can pick up, like, mm-hmm. off the bat. Yeah, like, 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 where you left off, right? Yeah, yeah. But I, I don't know, like... People are different, right? So I don't yeah. know if that's necessarily a good barometer for, like, every single person. Uh-huh. But yeah. Uh-huh. I feel like the older you get, the less, the harder it is to, like, I guess, meet up with, like, your high yeah. school. I remember freshman year, like, we were all very down and eager. Because, like, it's, like, especially, like, winter break of freshman year. Yeah, like, it's yeah. just, it's been one semester. You're so, like, like, I have updates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I feel like over yeah. time, it's just the other person, like, everyone's, like, kind of settled in or, like, yeah, they've, like, kind of found their community, like, yeah. at their campus, or, like, they're doing internships, or, like, yeah. they're researching, or they're working, like, I don't know. I think it's, like, it's kind of, like, a preview of, like, post-grad life, like, literally. That's what I'm saying. I'm so scared for that. Yeah. Like, I love, oh, yeah. so much. I love, I love the social life in, like, you know, in a college, right? You meet Because there's so many, a lot of people. so many like-minded people, and so many different people, right. all alike, just in a very mm. close, condensed space yeah, next to each other. Yeah, yeah. And it's super easy to, like find like those people right because it's just literally just like go on facebook like for now everyone's like yeah nobody uses facebook anymore but like <laughs> this is because they're not in college right yeah in college is like it's so easy to look at an event you just type in like mm-hmm. some description of what you want to join and like you find it right and not even that like uh, college campuses generally just have like flyering all over the place yeah. like you walk any like major like street or like walkway in a campus and there will be some form of flyering Mm, like tabling yeah 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 yeah. Yeah, for sure but yeah graduation is scary i'm so scared for it because like like for like social like relations you know yeah it's because when you get older like you just see your friends in like increasing increments of years yeah yeah yeah. like your dad said something about that once too right yeah like my dad was telling me he's like he's like enjoy it now because like it's not saying like it's a bad thing when you grow up but it's just like you don't see your friends with the same level of frequency and he was yeah. telling me like when he first got out it's like you know i'll see them like every one or two years and then it sl- slowly became five yeah, years and now it's like yeah. 10 years and now it's like 15 years everyone yeah, gets crazy. so busy after that yeah i think it's kind of wild knowing that like the, when you're that when you're that well the next time <laughs> like this might be the last time you ever see your friend right? yeah. yeah that's the scary part right like i have my dad had friends in like hong kong when uh-huh. he went to uh, like his university and stuff a bit like yeah you'll come back and each year he's just like yeah that, per- that person died or like oh, like he died of like crazy. illness or like he committed suicide uh-huh. i was just like oh that's crazy and it's just like yeah. i just remember like like this is morbid like i remember like in high school like like we all graduate right and you're just like you don't really think about like like is this the last time like i'll see this person yeah, right yeah. but then i just remember like scrolling on facebook and like just reading like a classmate of mine like she died in a car accident oh, and i was just like i mean i wasn't like remotely close to her but i was just like dang like i just like hit me just like we're like at that age yeah we're like i guess like you know car accidents like stuff like that and just like 
that can just take a life away, you know? Yeah. And just I, saying, think, like, I think as you get older, you like, you become like, your mentality becomes like, damn, I'm less invincible, you know? Yeah, what I mean? yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I think that's why, like, parents, you know, yeah. like, are very, like, cautious, right? Especially, like, Asian parents, because that's the only, I guess that's the only one I can really speak from, like, experience, right? But, like, right. they're always just, like, you know, like, job security, like, what are you going to do? Like, plan yeah. out your life. But then, like, when you're young, you're just like, oh, I just want to, like, have fun, right? Like, none of my <laughs> friends are thinking about this stuff, right? Right, right? Like, why do I have to, like, sacrifice my time for the future, you know? Yeah, yeah. Dang. Yeah, it's kind of wild. What are some other fears y'all have for, I guess, post-grad life? Um, um for me, like, uh, it's just, like, I won't be as close. And it's, like, I'm afraid that, like, what if? Like, once we graduate, like, I'm not friends with people anymore that, like, I would really like to be. Mm. Like, some of my friends, we were talking about it. We're like, oh, like, whose marriage would you, like, really want to go to? And I was like, <laughs> I said, like, some other friends of mine. But it's just like, yeah. like, there's that small chance that it's like, we just never talk again. And it's like, I could never know when they're married. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I was thinking yeah, about that, too. It's just like, everyone's like, because I guess, like, being invited to someone's marriage is kind of just like, Y'all are actually friends, right? Right. Like y'all, right. they care enough to invite you to like that moment. Right, right. And I was just like, I feel like I'm not gonna be invited to that many weddings, yeah. or the ones I, no. weddings I am invited, to, <laughs> the one the weddings I am invited to. Yeah. They're not gonna be married anytime soon, mainly because of like, like they're going to medical school uh, or stuff like that. Yeah. I've like, I think I touched yeah. upon this on the podcast before, but I was just like, that that is, that feels good, but feels bad. Yeah. I think I think one of yeah definitely the social aspect of, of things after graduation but i think i'm also scared of like okay like i love like start starting startups oh i love just, coming up with like ideas and stuff like just that. like passion projects yeah okay. yeah and For so sure. like i one day i eventually want to like create something but well, that's like my dream right now like create something and hopefully it becomes like successful and like every makes people's lives easier mm. um because it, it feels nice like seeing like if you made an impact in the world yeah right? and so i think Okay, there's, like, two things I'm scared of. Like, one is, like, getting used to, like, corporate life. Like, oh, getting you that 9 to 5, right? Because, mm-hmm. like, it's very hard to, like, pick <laughs> off because you get so many benefits, right? Yeah. So you get free food sometimes, maybe. Or, like, you know, you get, like, free he- health care or something like that, right? And then, like, if I wanted to do a startup, I, I, all that's gone, right? All that's gone, you yeah. provide it. Yeah, that's, that's right. That's, like, the even crazier part. And so, and then that's the first thing I'm scared of. Or the second thing, the first one was um, the social, right? The social aspect of, mm-hmm. like, stuff. And then the third thing is, like, dang, if I do end up, like, quitting my job and trying to do a startup, like, I don't know how many times, like, you know how they say, like, 90% of, like, startups fail, right? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I'm not actually scared of, like, failing, um, but I'm scared of like, dang, let's say like, it's like my ninth, my ninth startup right? yeah. or like whatever. And my, my past, my past eight startups all failed. Right. Mm-hmm. And I put like so much time and effort into it. Right. And it's like, dang, do I, do I really want to like, yeah, do, do that? Like, do, like, do I really want to le- take another leap of faith again? Like I'm getting older. Right. Yeah. So it's like, oh, am I going to have retirement or something like that? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so I that's feel. like, like being able to like still believing yourself after you failed so many times mm. i think that's another fear fear do you yeah. would you be afraid that your passion would die off with each failure or is it just a matter of just like confidence uh like what do you mean by that question like you know how like, some people is like if you fail like say like you're an actor or something right right and like you you just can't get a gig uh-huh. like, for some of them like i guess their passion is they get kinda, really demoralized I guess, oh. like their passion is just kind of like i mean i guess confidence and passion are kind of linked together right, but like, right. i guess their their passion for acting is kind of just like Fading over time, like, oh, this is just a childish dream. Mm-hmm. Like, it's time to move on to, like, adult stuff. Like, they may even uh, regret it, right? Right. But do you think, like, if you failed that many times, it would be a matter of you just losing... Oh, it end up being, like, you losing passion for, like, whatever you're doing? Or, like, you just I lost confidence? I don't think, like, it would... I don't know. I say this now, but I might be <laughs> affected. Um, I don't think it would, like, get rid of my passion... Cause I've like I've always like loved creating things, mm-hmm. like um, I took like art in high school and I love like I I did like sculptures and stuff like that. Oh. I love I love creating things, and I've done like some side projects of creating things, and like some of them they would fail right. Like I remember like I had a collection like oh it was crazy like it was a collection of um it was, like wooden crossbows like minimal oh. min- like 
It was like a mini, wood, like, foldable wooden crossbow. All right, I think that. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, and so, like, I remember my first, like, prototype of that thing. It was, like, ugly as hell, bro. <laughs> like, and, like, I, I kept going at it. And it took, like, I, I, like, I think it took, like, two years before I like, got my, like, what I really wanted. So I don't know if, like, my passion would, like, die off. I don't think it would. But definitely, like, my confidence would, I think. Mm. And I was like, dang, am I even, like, qualified to do this or whatever? Like, it's, it just... Like, after the ninth one, it's like, am I just being, like, reckless or something like that? You know what I mean? So, mm-hmm. I think maybe, like, my confidence would take a hit. Um, but, yeah. I think, yeah, I think I think that's what I think, yeah. Mm. I, th- I, th- I think it can be really rough. Like, yeah. uh, fortunately for me, I've just gotten very lucky in the opportunities I've had. Mm-hmm. Like, for example, I, like, basically made it the first time I auditioned to be, like, a dance TA. Oh, and nice. just, like, other things like that. So... But I definitely know I would be very demoralized if, like, I wasn't accepted. Mm-hmm. Because I think... Like you wouldn't do it as, as often? Or I would be, like, more scared to try oh, again. Oh. Mm-hmm. I think that's, like, how it is. Like, I was talking to Alex about this before you came. It was, like, talk about med school. Like, a lot of people, mm-hmm. like, have this idea that they want to go right after undergrad. But, like, uh, the average... Like, the statistics say, like, that's not super common. Mm-hmm. But, like, a lot of people get crushed when they, like, don't get, like, an interview or something. Oh. And it's, like... Like, it's, like, tough. Right. Like, in the moment, like, if you have an interview, like, you can try to, like, tell them, like, yeah, it's just one or just two, you know? But it's, like, when you don't have anything, it feels super demoralizing. That's true. Mm. Yeah, it's, like, I guess, like, I didn't realize, like, how hard it is, mainly because, like, I just assumed, like, the risky part of pre-med or, like, the hard part of pre-med was just, like, the the discipline. The discipline, right? The discipline to, like, study hard. I guess also kind of just, like, hoping that you're like, you can study well enough and long enough to, like, get that good GPA. Mm-hmm. But even hearing about, like, how, like, people with, who are, are seemingly, like, they do well in school, they have, like, good extracurriculars, mm-hmm. like, they're not getting interviews as well. Like, that's what Ben has told me. And I was just like, oh, like, this is a lot more, <laughs> like, like, a flip of a coin than, like, I mm-hmm. thought it would be, right? So, I guess it's interesting because, like, I guess as, I guess as Asian Americans, like, we're kind of, we're kind of shuttled into the the fields that are like very formulaic like mm-hmm. like you can game the system to get a high paying job right right like, right like the There's, reason wait, oh, just keep going i uh, said so the reason why like you know like we <laughs> kind of got into cs is because our parents like at least my dad was a software right. engineer so right. he knew he he knew the path a lot of like friends or would be like hey like like take this class or mm-hmm. like if you want to apply to these jobs like here are the steps you do mm-hmm. like don't buy your time with these companies stuff like that like it's very formulaic uh, and like yeah. versus like i guess the perception of like other jobs where it's just like you're kind of just applying and interviewing and like hoping you can make an impact later on and i kind of just assumed medical school was like that too mm-hmm. but then i guess it's like hearing like the process like how they wanted to see like if you're like a human being like do you have a personality <laughs> do you have a heart you know uh-huh. so maybe it's like oh like maybe this is not like this is not the dream right like right. feel that most asians yeah. see right but i guess a lot of it's tied down to money too Wait, so, like, if you get, like, a 4.0, like, okay, because you're competing against, like, everyone has every, Everyone has right. very, like, high stats. Right? Yeah. And so, like, Unless they would have given up by this point. Yeah. Because, like, at that point, like, how do you make yourself different than other people? That's exactly why it feels like getting these interviews is uh, such a crapshoot. Because, uh, like, there's a huge applicant pool, and then most schools, like, give only, like, a thousand interviews or less. Oh, it's and like so, a quota, right? They have to fill it's it. not that necessarily a quota. They're taking, they're just giving you, like as many spots as they think will yield the number of people they want to uh, matriculate. Okay, yeah. okay. So like, it, like from what I've seen, like it goes up and down, but it generally balances out to like a thousand. Damn. Cause that's, that's even more stressful than like yeah. internships and stuff like that. I was going to ask, what that's I mean? why I, like I accidentally interrupted you. It's like, is it like similar when you're like looking for internships or like a job? I mean, oh. generally you, you like to think that like for an internship is also formulaic, like, Oh, I had right. an internship before. Like I should get an interview from like every place, but that's usually not the case. Um, yeah. I think it's in general more, probably more formulaic than getting an interview from like a med school because you're not. No one really cares about like extracurriculars or volunteering. It's usually just like what projects do you have? Yeah. What interviews do you have? But I think like once you get an interview is like not guaranteed because like there's like a technical aspect where you're yeah. you're expected to solve like a coding problem, and like that that like process has been like. I guess, like, widely panned by, like, a lot of people, mainly, because, like, it's kind of hard to tell. It doesn't really, like, evaluate your actual skill as, like, a software engineer if you're, like, applying for, like, a software engineering role Mm -hmm. with CS. Because, like, it's just, like, 
it kind of just teaches it's like more of like test taking right like you're just mm. good at taking that test or good at solving those problems but you may not actually be good at like creating something and like with like a mm. program or like i don't know like knowing like the subject about like academia like i, I one of my friends put it nicely just like just because this person ha- is like has an internship or a job at like facebook or google doesn't necessarily mean they're smart like it could just mean like they're just good at like acing the interview right mm-hmm. but like he has like he's like i have some friends who like work at these companies but like they don't really show that much curiosity in just creating stuff i know some people who are really good at creating stuff like they freeze up when they whiteboard mm-hmm. some people just like just want to learn like their theoretical they don't like coding much so it's like i think like for cs is very like it's, it's like it's not just like programming for like and like the programming you do doesn't like necessarily translate across all fields it's like it's like you kind of have to like prepare for one field like it's its own study yeah mm-hmm. so, yeah yeah i guess for like for me like <clears throat> it's like recruiting like for internships in, in this case it would be like dang like it's okay if i fail this one like it's okay but you know, i mean it still feels bad that like, you get yeah. rejected right but it's like now yeah, just apply to next company next company right i don't know if it's a, it's the same because y'all guys have that like that one that one med school that y'all really want to get yeah into, and then, like others like how many companies do you typically apply to do i apply to like a lot of companies <laughs> yeah at least right. like at least 40 at least 40 at least 40 or yeah. One more yeah because that, that like, might not even be enough yeah yeah because like i remember i started applying okay this is going to sound crazy i started applying in like the summer and i got a few interviews but like no no offers like for the upcoming summer um internship so you're applying apply, a year in advance yeah yeah, yeah. recruiting for cs yeah. starts really early yeah. uh, especially in like university yeah yeah and so like i remember that and then yeah, at least 40 bro for me because yeah. I, I i like halfway through like maybe two-thirds through i was like okay let me like document like um which internships i like applied to and that that was around like 23 and so like that means i applied a lot more like in the past yeah dang so yeah. I don't know about like medical. Can you like? Cause I, I know it costs money to apply. Yeah, right? it costs money to apply. Does it not cost money to apply? No, <laughs> no. It's just, oh no, wow, no. it's just uh, it's your just, resume. Wait, are these applications like? Is do you just give a resume or do you yeah. have to write? Oh, uh, you click, you click, like you send a resume, but some companies might want you to write like a cover letter, yeah, which is basically yeah. like a short. I don't want to say yeah. essay, but kind of just like it's a short introduction. Already, like, right? Yeah, just literally just like like a, a letter, like hey, like this is this is who I am as a person, like right, this is why right. I'd be a good fit for your company. Um, so that changes from company to company. Yes, I don't know how much of an impact it has on like the actual like you getting an interview. It might, they just might want to see if you you would do it. Like I remember in the past, I'm kind of lazy, so if I see a company with a cover letter, I'm like, <laughs> I'm not applying to this place. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So it really, it really depends. But yeah, for the most part, application is really just clicking a button. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. interesting. Because med school, it's imagine like applying to college, but in two ways. So there's yeah. a primary application and a <laughs> secondary application. Mm-hmm. You can only access the secondary application once you finish the primary application. Oh. And the primary application is like very similar to college, right? It has all the things like where'd you go, what'd right, you do in right. these classes, like what are what did you do? Like a, an annoying part about like the application thing that I didn't like was that like you couldn't submit a resume. You had to type out each individual thing onto their website. I can understand why they'd want that for document documenting purposes mm-hmm. and like you don't actually have to go read this thing you can just like input it and have it categorized already mm-hmm. so like i understand the purpose behind it i just didn't like that it was more time consuming but there's like then on top of that there's like the personal statement and like two supplementary essays mm-hmm. and the per- the primary goes to like all the schools you apply to mm-hmm. yeah and then after that <clears throat> depending on whether the school is a secondary or not some don't they'll send you a secondary application once your primary has been processed. Uh, and then so for you like, are you guaranteed the second one or no? It like, depends what school you're applying oh, okay, to. Okay, the okay. higher, the very high tier ones like filter you out starting at the oh, secondary. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, okay. So yeah, it's kind of like in regular college, like you have like certain essays, like in Applied Texas. Yeah, or, like, yeah, yeah. Or like yeah. the other big, uh, there's, there's one other that like, you apply to like other schools. Yeah. But, like you, you might have like some specific sub essay, sub questions that they want you to do. Yeah, and then they'll send you those specific ones, and then you mm. go do that. And that's, then that's when your application is complete, once you've submitted that. Because mm. I remember in college, like, you just apply to each place, like, once. 
and like you just you just finish that essay right but it sounds like for primary and secondaries you have to pay a, a price you have to pay for the primaries and then you have to pay for the secondaries as well yes oh wow that's wow. a lot of money so like how much like... how much does it usually cost per like primary and secondary <laughs> the primary was a lot <laughs> <laughs> i i want to oh, say like man, that's... it definitely was like 200 Oh, and then each secondary is 60. Bro. Oh, wow. So it's 200 per each school and 60. No, no, 200 overall for the oh, primary. Okay, okay. Oh, okay. I was, like, I was just like, that's I was like, like, that's a lot for one application. <laughs> it's like 200 <laughs> for a primary and then secondary per school. I think the secondaries end up costing more. Mm. So like, do you think... Like, let's say you apply to 10 schools and all of them have secondaries, that's $600. Mm. Okay, okay. So then like... Okay, so if you're not with like the best financial background, like it's very costly to apply to a lot of schools. Then, right? Yes. Damn. So do you think like I think there's a way to be financially supported with that, but yeah. it's like it's still really tough because like the there's a not only is there like a skill barrier, yeah, like merit barrier, I guess, but there's also like a financial barrier. Yeah. Mm. I remember hearing like a lot of people, a lot of parents want their kids to like if they're like not like super like their social economic status is not super like like great like they're like oh please be a doctor so you can have a better living for yourself but it's just like mm, but it just costs even, a lot of money. <laughs> even in that case it's just like it's already a lot of money to even like have a chance to maybe talk to these like med schools and then even then after that like you're in a lot of like debt from like how expensive like four yeah. years of med school is and then residency residency then like specialization. they don't they don't pay without like they pay like 50k a year or something like residency uh-huh. right so it's, it's like it takes a while before you like you're actually like making that like 400k or something yeah yeah Yeah. and then it's like the crazy part for me is because like like backtracking to what i said earlier it's like some of these people you think they're like amazing they're like to whenever you know like you know them and they're just like oh they're like so good they have like all these good stats they like do a lot of stuff on the side they're just like Mm -hmm. super involved and they don't have anything Mm -hmm. and it's just like really crazy and it, it it's just insane to me that like Sometimes, like, you think a person is a really good fit and they end up with nothing. Yeah. I was like, I guess, what like... What is that? False, false, false negative? What is that? Oh, like a false... Oh, like false negatives, like, they were they were labeled as a negative when they could have been... A, they, were, they were actually like, oh, positive. Oh, is it po- yeah. positive? No, false I, positive? it's definitely is false negative. Because false, false positive, positive is when, like, you're saying something is this case, this trait, uh-huh. when they weren't, right? Yeah. So, uh-huh. Like, this case would be false negative because, like, they were labeled as not good when they were actually, like, good. Oh, you know? uh, okay, okay. Like, good okay. being the trait. But the thing is, like, how do you even elucidate someone's, like, true nature? Like, because it's really hard. Even, like, when you talk to your friends... Like, it, yeah. unless you yeah, get, yeah. like, really deep with them, it's hard to figure out what they're actually like. like. Mm-hmm. And then so it was, like, for these admissions officers, it's so difficult to, like, figure out who's genuine, like, mm-hmm. who's, like, X, Y, and Z. And then, like, and then so everyone's thought process is different. And so trying to replicate that onto someone else, it's, like, you never understand their thought process. Sometimes yeah. maybe it's as simple as, like, oh, they said, like, this one thing, and I really like that. Yeah, yeah. But sometimes it is, like, it's very holistic. Like, it's hard to figure it out. Yeah, it's definitely... It's like a lot of people like like we complain about how CS recruiting is like you know like there's frustration with pre med recruiting but it's like you know what are the alternatives right? right like what else can you do to make the process like as efficient but like like the best it can be you know because like as much as like we can say like oh it's like this system sucks but like it could just be the best of the worst you know I don't really think the system is that bad it's just that it's like it it sucks for people because like. You put a lot into this. Yeah. And not saying that you guys That's don't. True. Yeah, but yeah, like no, it, sure. it feels like a lot of people don't have a backup plan mm-hmm. when they do pre med. Yeah, like And so like this is like really demoralizing to not even get like a chance to like justify that like, oh, I can go to med school. Like if you don't get that interview offer, it feels like you were never given the opportunity to show. Right. Yeah. right. And there's like less med schools than there are companies. I also That's, think yeah. it sucks too, because there's a lot of like outside judgment. Like you know, like me like even like in like for me, like I just didn't know much about the process. I'm just like, oh like that person like probably just doesn't have good stats like why are they even trying right Mm -hmm. before like hearing like oh like it's just it's just unfortunate you know like like, you're literally like like you just throw it up in the air like you have faith that like you know someone someone will listen and like give you an interview yeah i feel like pre-med you have to like know like exactly what you're doing kind of because like like let's say like you go into like pre-med like in the med school right and then you're like oh wait do i really want to do this yeah i mean like you you've like invested so many years yeah you know what i mean so it's like very hard or i mean you can still do like go into another profession but it's like it's like you you would view those years as like oh yeah i wish i would have done it differently there's not a lot of transferable skills Mm. i guess yeah it's just like i guess there's one thing about another thing about postgrad life too right it's just like 
they're always saying, hey, like, you probably won't work in the major you start in, right? And usually when people say that, I'm just yeah. like, well, I'm CS, right? Like, <laughs> like, I'm expected to be in the, like, I'm actually expected to work in the, I guess, the major, what I majored in. So it's because I'm just thinking about, like, hearing, like, this thing about, like, for Prima, like, it's very, like, planned out or should right, be planned right. out. And, like, it seems like there's not that many, like, room for flexibility. It's kind of mm-hmm. just like, I think mean, that's also, like, another thing that's pretty scary about postgrad life is just, like, it's the big unknown, right? Yeah. It's like in college, high school, like everything is building up to the next stage. But like this next, like the stage after this is just you die. Yeah. <laughs> so like, like yeah. for how planned pre-med is and how known it is, it's super uncertain when you're trying to take the next step. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's, it's crazy because like we talk a lot about, people talk a lot about like life stages and stuff, right? But I feel like once you get to the next life stage, it's like, is super broad like stages overlap with each other like you can be 40 bit 40 and single and be in the same life stage as someone who's like 25 and like newly married right Mm -hmm. so it's just like it just seems like there's like a lot of overlap it's just like yeah i guess like everything just seems really nebulous and like it's not super well defined which i guess is what makes you know the future kind of scary and unknown yeah yeah that leap of faith is hard bro it's so hard. hard Especially when, like, like let's say you're calculating odds, like for, like I don't know, like, uh, like you're recruiting, like you're taking a leap of faith, knowing like what your odds already are, because you have like the variables that you can control, right? Mm-hmm. Your resume, your GPA, like what you're doing in your free time, like these are things you can control, and so you can already calculate roughly some odds, and then like knowing those odds affects your leap of faith. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. I guess it's just one of those things where like. <laughs> It's like that saying where, like, just because you work hard doesn't necessarily mean you'll be rewarded. But everyone who's, like, been up there, like, they've worked hard, you know? Yeah. So it's just kind of just like, like, you're going for this goal, not for the guarantee, but for the high probability that you'll make it, right? But yeah. just because, like, you didn't make it doesn't mean the, the odds were wrong. It just means mm-hmm. that you were unlucky. And yeah. you, were, you were in that, like, if it was, like, 97% chance, you were that 3%, right? Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. It's tough. Yeah. Well... In conclusion, just better hope that, uh, just better hope you're in a good position. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Dang, dang. So, yeah, it's like, I think it's about time to wrap things up. Sure. Um, oh, before we get into that, I, I wanted to hear more about his inspiration for, uh, these shirts. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. there's the absence of apparel shirts. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> I mean, it's just, it's just, um, just more like Asian representation mm-hmm. uh, was it was it also a big deal um like like seeing like if I could see like a lot of people wearing this like the t-shirts like that would be awesome because like um it just shows like the like the Asian community right like mm-hmm. like because you know like America's like a melting pot yeah. of like Supposedly, and, like, yeah. you know, supposedly, right? Yeah. But, like, on TV, right? You don't, you don't see, like, too many of those, right? Mm-hmm. Like, everyone's, so. like, white. And then if it's, like, some diversity, there's some black people. Mm-hmm. There's some, like, LGBTQ people. Yeah, And then yeah. if you're lucky, there'll be an Asian person. Right, right. And yeah. so, yeah. That's why, like, because, like, I think also, like, a few of my, like, um, like non-Asian friends also, like, like the design because, like, they also, like, have experience, like, um, like boba for example yeah like they've been mm. drinking boba and stuff like that mm. or even, it's like more or even this right oh yeah right. so this is not I, like, that's like, not like an asian thing specifically right yeah like, yeah yeah but right. it's like it's like okay if you can't see it it says uh like it's a fortune cookie yeah and uh it says and the, doctor lawyer engineer or disgrace yeah and so it's basically you got to choose one of those <laughs> so, yeah. it's a very like common trait like a subtle Asian trait amongst many like households of that descent. However, it's not necessarily like held only to Asians. Right, right, right. Yeah. right. And so, oh yeah, like, that's why it's called subtle Asian traits. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I thought it was created subtle Asian traits because it was SAT. <laughs> no, but it, says, it was from Australia. That's just a co- like they don't give a fuck about the SAT. No, no, no. Like when I first heard SAT, I was like, whoa, I'm not back in high school like during the year or whatever. Like, <laughs> Cause it's like, oh, are you in like, oh, I forgot what question. Like it was like, I took a survey and then something, something, it's the SAT. I was like, what is that? And they had to like explain it. Um, but yeah, I think, and also like inspiration is like also trying to like bring people closer together. Um, I, in the way that's like, oh damn, like I kind of get that. You know what I mean? Like you can kind of relate to that. Like for this shirt, for instance, or whatever. Um, and then like that shirt, it's like, I, it's like you basically bust your bobo, right? <laughs> 
and then and then like I have I have like a d- three part series of like chopsticks and mm-hmm. different ways of like whole chopsticks. I know like a lot a lot of people like can like talk about like the cross chopsticks like people can't hold it right or something like that. It's like whatever, right? but it, it, like the whole point of it is also like to kind of also bring people together. Like oh, uh, I, I get that joke kind of you know. Mm. See those but, three shirts. It's like different ways of whole chopsticks. But it's this the sum of the parts is great it's like the whole is greater than some of the parts right right mm-hmm. yeah for sure yeah. for sure well yeah that's really cool that you know you're doing something just for the community because i just feel like yeah like the asian american community mm-hmm. uh it's already like yeah it's kind of fragmented right like it's very i think a lot of people like they they like hanging out with other asian people but like, they don't really i guess think about why <laughs> like, I, I guess like you're just drawn to like you're just drawn to your people right 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 yeah, i guess right, like right. yeah there's not that much like discussion around it or there's not that much you know kind of just like not as much like asian american pride necessarily like mm-hmm. before i remember even bef- like before subtle asian trades before boba like like a, everyone like has like that lunchbox moment or like they bring like like i remember <laughs> oh, yeah like i, you bring, you, I, like, I you. remember bringing dumplings to like lunch <laughs> and people be like oh that's so smelly right <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, now, yeah. Smelly. like now everybody like they love dumplings like they yeah, love they love like yeah. ramen or whatever so yeah. yeah i think it's yeah we need stuff like this like it's like the little stuff that counts right, right like the little right. grassroots grassroots like youtube channels and like businesses mm-hmm. you know that can help i guess build up the asian american culture i also thought something that like was also really cool is that like a lot of people that we know are like doing creative endeavors in mm-hmm. like their senior year mm-hmm. it's like i don't know i just thought it was really cool i that, mean like, like y'all guys are. too right yeah, yeah, and this, oh, yeah, yeah. this is awesome you know like, this like, podcast yeah um i think like when you start something like you learn the ins and outs of everything that you didn't yeah, know before for sure. right? like some 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 simple things like trying to upload to like you know spotify or something right like for me like oh i need to buy this like ssl to like protect yeah yeah, yeah. it's like you learn the ins and outs and you learn to like appreciate like things more you know what i mean like it's it's a good experience to like start something and then like try to learn from it yeah Yeah, i guess it's like it's what the experience has given you and like that's how like what helps shape you shape you as a person right Yeah. yeah i remember yeah, I mean, this podcast was started just as, like, a way for, like, me and Ben to, like, kind of talk with more people, I guess, like, mm-hmm. flesh out different perspectives that can help shape us as people right. as well. It's, like, that's a big reason why we wanted to do it. I think, like, personally, like, I was also just, like, like, I guess as two, like, Asian American guys, mm-hmm. like, it's also a cool way, like, because inherently, like, what we will talk about and, like, what we're gonna, like, how we think is, like, been heavily shaped by, like, our cultural background. Mm-hmm. So, like, even the way, like, this is, like, another way of, like, I guess... Like Asian American representation, like the arts, right? Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. uh, usually, it's just like you end up being like, you know, like a engineer, doctor, or like something <laughs> high paying. Like you don't really think about like, I guess having hobbies like this. So I was right. like, yeah, like it's really cool that we can do something like this to like be more involved in like the community, even if it's like right. just uploading something to Spotify or YouTube. Yeah, so, and yeah. I and I think it's awesome that you guys like started something like for real. I love like when people start and take initiative. And yeah, stuff. same. Like, I yeah. love that. I thought, yeah. yeah, I thought it was really cool when I saw your shirt. Thank day. you. Mm-hmm. Thank I was like, you. it's like a lot of people just have ideas, but then when you give your idea life, that is yeah. like the coolest part. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. that's... for sure, for sure. It's like yeah, even like when we started our podcast, everyone's like, wow, like you actually did it, right? Because like I think like everyone's like jokingly like you know been like yeah, let's start a podcast. Yeah, yeah. Because like you know we talk. We had like those long talks or something, or like right. they're like, oh, like, it would be really cool if like we had like a brand like this, right? Right, but, like, right, right. Like I think it takes like a lot of support and like encourage from like your friends right. to like even, I guess, take that initiative, you know. Right. And then so, like self motivation too, right? Bringing yourself to like oh yeah, do it. That that's yeah. Like that's like the idea is the first step. It's like I th- I think there's like this one thing is called like one two hundred. Oh, right. do you know what I'm talking about? I like, think I do. Wait, explain. Come on. Okay, I don't know about it too much. <laughs> I also heard about it. He was it. like, I was hoping you would explain no, it. No, no, yeah, no, no, I think no, I, no. I remember it. It's you like, said something. It's like the diff- like the the number of steps you need to get to to somewhere. Oh, like the first step for like anything would be like the idea. The second step would be like initiating stuff, and then mm. there's like just a lot of ins and outs you have to do between like number like the first step and the last step. Or I don't think there's really a last step unless it's like. Yeah, there's yeah. no real last step. You're always moving towards something. You're always right. improving towards something. Right, right. But mm. it's, it's, just, it's just about, like, a taking initiative. Yeah. And, and, like, actually, like, bringing something that you talk about to life. Yeah. I think that's, like, a 
a major thing in just like life generally. Like this is advice for just mm. if you want to do anything in life. Like taking initiative is super super important. Like whether you want to like make friends or you want to like try something new because you don't you never know what you don't know. That's true. And so like That's I'm like a huge proponent of like try something that you've never tried before because you don't know that you don't like it. You just think you don't like it. Right. Mm. right. And so like if you end up not liking it, that's okay. You confirmed what you already believed. But right. then you end up liking it. It's just it opens a whole new path for you. Right, right a whole new world yeah, yeah dude yeah. yeah but yeah so yeah just like without i guess with friends and like each other like we would definitely have not have gotten this far so yeah that's why uh thanks for sponsoring thank you. yeah dude thank, thank you guys yeah thank you guys yeah. yeah so like how was your time on here today it was great it was great um Definitely a lot, to, lots to talk about. You know what I mean? We could definitely I, I could really have talked enjoyed, about like, talking. There's even yeah. more we could have talked we could, about. We definitely could have yeah. dove. Like, we could have dove. Like the Asian American representation stuff is like a whole. Yeah, that's a whole another topic. Whole, that's like yeah. a whole, a whole freaking series. You know? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah it could yeah, be a whole insane. podcast just dedicated to that. Right? <laughs> I mean, there are podcasts just dedicated to that. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff we could have talked about. So you know. I enjoyed it today. I really liked yeah. it. I really liked it too. And it's really cool that we're giving like a face. To like, yeah. Right, right, Before yeah, we would just be you. like, yeah, or sponsor. I'm just like, <laughs> what the, like, what the hell? Like, what? What do you mean they're sponsor? Like, are, are they getting paid? Like, who, who's the sponsor? Like, what's right, going right, on? Right, so right, right. now you know, like, this it's is just two. It's some guys helping each other yeah, out. It's that's the man. Right, it's the man right. behind the business. You know. Whoa, yeah, yeah, so yeah. As I said earlier, without you know, we should all support each other. Like, we're that's all friends. Right, like, right. we're all part of the community. So like, without each other, like, we would without like we can't do anything by ourselves. Right. Right. Yeah. Right, right. So without like each other, like we, we wouldn't go anywhere. So yeah. Um, just wrapping things up, you know, this was an episode of Nuance Nonsense. Like, we don't know, we're not experts or anything. We don't know what we're talking about, but we do like talking. So, yeah, here, yeah, these are just our thoughts. But, yeah, wrapping up. Signing out.